story of these two. <laughs> so, uh, but not, not, I don't think Gary knows the story behind these two. See, um, that couple went to uh, a graduate art school at, here in Los Angeles. I won't say the name, but there's only a few of them that are overpriced and produce worthless degrees, so you can, you can decide which one that is. So, um, and uh, there were very sophisticated performance artists, and you know the very sophisticated performance art field is one that requires you to forget about consumer culture and pop culture and create your own language. And so they created these amazing deconstructionist costumes. He created a costume and a performance and a persona that deconstructed the human skeleton. She constructed a persona that deconstructed beauty, the bane of conceptual art. They were lauded at this graduate school. Everybody worshipped them. And they got their degree. And somebody said, hey, Somebody not at the school said, hey, these look like fucking Halloween costumes. <laughs> and they were distraught. And then they couldn't get a job with these degrees. <laughs> and they, they were so distraught they committed suicide. <laughs> and they started haunting. Very grad school. <laughs> that had so deluded them into thinking that mimicking ordinary things was elitist art. <laughs> and the only way to protect yourself is a very complex, oh man, I have my device on now to protect me from being haunted by them. You, can, you have a choice. You can go get a $100,000 art degree that's totally worthless. That'll protect you from them. Or you can get this, uh, this contraption <laughs> to you. And what this does is in, in the ghost of vibe language, ghosts have a vibe language, what this does is it says there's no need for art school. <laughs> Children who are told that there are art schools look at horror at the people and say, you mean you forgot how to draw? <laughs> so, get that, get that art degree or these ghosts are going to haunt you unless you want one of these contraptions. <laughs> speaker without any of her clothes on, <laughs> or on a small. into ones, 
and time released into the G-strings of the day shift pole dancers. <laughs> Donald enjoyed his brew with a view, especially when Lady Armani took center stage. He sat transfixed as she rubbed her tattooed voluptuous body across the floor to ACDC's dirty deeds. <laughs> Being that it was the slowest time of the week for business, it had, and it had been a particularly, particularly evocator sort of way. <laughs> Rent was due in less than a week, and Lady Armani had a ride to the pot dispensary coming at 2.30. She had to make it happen quickly. Before Donald's nose could absorb her cloud of vanilla musk, he was caught in between two thigh-high spiked heel boots and straddle. Lady Armani forced this lap dance onto her victim as if it were her dying wish. She grabbed the nearly empty bottle of Coors with one hand, and pulled her PVC thong away to reveal her cunt. The thing had 14 silver rings, seven on each lip, and it was pulsating like a leather sea anemone. <laughs> the bottleneck went in, she grinded into it, and squeezed Donald firmly between her fishnetted thighs. Second song, Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy End. Donald's wallet lay sprawled out on the bottom, vacated of all his cash. His mistress takes leave of him after she puts the bottle back into his hand. Dopey and completely washed over with escapism, he takes a sip from that beer, which would be his last. As she fucked the bottle, one of Lady Armani's 14 piercings had slipped off. Donald unexpectedly choked to death. <laughs>